So I'm going back to my childhood for a moment. Legos. Used to love to play with them. Back in those days, it was just a few bricks and windows and doors. Now you have these sophisticated sets. You can build the, the Saturn V. You can build all kinds of things. Well, this toy actually goes back to the 1930s. And the Danish carpenter Ole Christensen, at first he was making toys out of wood. But then the plastic revolution happened in the 1940s. And he thought that this would be the way to go. He had an idea to make these interlocking bricks. Well, the very first ones were made of cellulose acetate. And that's a plastic we still use today. Eyeglasses, for example, are, are made of that. But it wasn't quite flexible enough. So he started a whole research effort because he wanted to have a toy that was the best. That was his motto, the best of everything. And his researchers turned up a plastic, ABS, uh, acrylonitrobutadienestyrene, which had just the right consistency. It was hard enough, but still a little bit flexible so that you could uh, put the pieces together. And that's when it, uh, it really took off. Now, there were some issues uh, uh, about dyeing, and then some of the older dyes uh, were based on cadmium. They have since been replaced, so that there's no, no question uh, anymore about those. Then they started uh, expanding into things like little cars, and the cars needed tires. So the tires had to have a lot more flexibility, so it needed a new kind of plastic. And this turned out to be styrene butadiene styrene. Now, all of these plastics that were used in the original Lego actually were developed in the 1930s in Germany. Why? Because Germany knew that war was coming and they were looking for substitutes for rubber. They were scared that it would be cut off from their rubber supplies, the natural rubber. And they came up with things like styrene butadiene styrene, which was great for tires. Believe it or not, to this day, Lego is the largest tire manufacturer in the world. More than Bridgestone, more than uh, Goodyear. Now, truth be told, most of those tires are small, but nevertheless, they are the largest tire manufacturer in the world. Uh, there are some issues with, with Lego today. The transparent pieces, like the little windows, well, they have to be made in a different plastic, and that's polycarbonate. And that's the one that is formulated with bisphenol A. That's a sort of a chemical that has been in the news as an endocrine disruptor, but you really don't have to worry about it in this context. There isn't any that leaches out to, to contaminate uh, children. The concern these days with Lego is discarding the pieces because they end up in the environment, they end up in the ocean. And a recent study showed that when they float around in the ocean, they slowly degrade. And this is uh, uh, possibly resulting in microplastics that we worry about. And Lego can stay in the oceans for hundreds of years. So it's a crime to throw this away. Give it to children because they are imaginative. They will make things out of it. And these days with COVID-19, you want to keep your kids occupied and not sitting in front of the TV for 15 hours a day. And Lego will do that. Uh, it teaches hand skill, teaches imagination. Uh, but don't let them throw it away. And uh, of course, there are new sets coming out all the time. I think they're not going to be thrown away. The newest one that LEGO has put out has over 2,600 pieces. This is a challenge even for adults. What is it? Well, it's a replica of a, a console and an old-fashioned TV set with Super Mario Brothers on the screen. And that's a throwback to our childhood. And uh, these days, with all of the problems we're having, it's not bad to think of uh, how happy we were when we were children. Just one last thing to remember about Lego. Be careful about pieces on the floor because if you step on one, you'll never forget it.